<laughs> we're like, I'll talk. Hi, I'm Ann. And I'm Wade. And this is How We Van. And today we're going to talk about a question that we get a lot. The differences between the Airstream Interstate 19 and the Gretsch Turismo IM. And we've owned both. So right now we're going to do a head-to-head -head kind of comparison and then we'll let you know why we switched. I should mention before we get into this that the two models we are comparing, the Airstream Interstate 19 and the Gretsch Turismo Ion are both vehicles that we have owned. Our Gretsch, we owned a 4x4 unit with the Ion version that has the battery. Our Airstream was a 4x2 unit and did not have the all-electric capability referred to as the E1 package. So right now we're not going to compare Ion versus non-Ion or non-E1 package. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We're going to try to dwindle this down to the apples and apples um, comparison. We are not affiliated with either company. We don't get paid by Airstream or for Gret. So we bought both vehicles ourselves. So we're just going to give you our honest feedback on why we switched. So um, if you're going to like this video or if you if you haven't already, please do subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out a lot. It gives us encouragement to keep doing these videos. Um, also, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up and like it and share it. Thanks. All right. Should we begin? Let's do it. All right. First things first, let's compare both vehicles. So the Airstream Interstate 19 is a 19 foot vehicle and the Gretsch Turismo is a 19 foot vehicle and they're both on the, the Mercedes chassis. In addition, their layouts are basically the same. You kind of walk in to the, 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 you know, from the slider, you walk in, the bathroom is across the hall. It's a wet bath in both. The kitchen is off to your left when you walk in. And then in the back, there is a couch that we're sitting on right now that folds into a queen size, king size bed. So the layouts are basically very, very similar. It's on the same chassis. They're the same size vehicle, which is something that we were both very, very interested in and having this little 19 foot van that can walk, uh, that we, a 19 foot van that we can park, not walk. And since they're both on the Mercedes chassis, the dimensions inside from front to back and from wall to wall are roughly the same. Let's go into the, the general specs of, of, both, of both vehicles, Interstate 19 versus the Turismo Ion. We'll go ahead and we'll pop this on the um, on the screen let's look at the let's look at the tanks the fresh tank is a little bit bigger in the interstate where it's 18 gallons whereas turismo is 16. the gray tank is sus substantially larger in the turismo at 26 gallons versus the interstate 16 gallon and then the black tank is larger in the turismo at 13 gallons versus the interstate's nine gallon but I have to say, you know me, if you watch any of these videos, I do like a larger fresh tank. The um, Interstate 19 had a Truma water heater and um, regular heater versus the Turismos is with Timberline. Um, they both have heated tanks. They both had a two burner cooktop. They both obviously have a refrigerator and a freezer where the Interstate's is slightly larger at 3.2 cubic feet. Um, Interstate has a microwave, whereas the Turismo Ion's microwave is a combo with a convection oven and an air fryer combined. And a dehydrator. Yes, and a dehydrator. Um, to dump your tanks or to empty the tanks, the Interstate 19 has a macerator versus Turismo uses gravity. Both have solar power. The Airstream has 250 watts of solar, while the Turismo Ion only has 200 watts of solar. The beds are roughly the same size. This is the sofa that folds into the bed in the back. They, they are identical according to the specs on the, on the websites. The Interstate 19 comes with a 24-inch TV. The Turismo Ion has a smart TV of the same size. Both have automatic shades, automatic lights, and both have available four-wheel drive. The warranties are similar. All right, well, that was our that was going over the specs for for both vehicles. Now let's look at the pros and cons. First, I don't I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the strong brand name and the strong brand recognition that Airstream has. Everyone's heard of an Airstream. 
and it's a solid, solid product. No one's heard of a Gretsch. Very few people have. Uh, Interstate 19 has a great dealer network. You can find an Interstate 19 and an Airstream almost anywhere. That, and when you go to the dealer, you know they service Airstreams because they're an Airstream dealer. In terms of the inside usable space, within the Airstream, you can comfortably seat at least three people in the back section, two on the sofa and one on at least one of the side ottomans. Um, I also think that the Airstream has a better layout for their overall cabinets. I also think the Airstream 19 uses higher quality foam or a thicker foam for their seats as well as for the couch and bed. You can tell on the bed, the Airstream mattress is a little more comfortable. Now we use a mattress topper, so it's not that big a deal no matter which one we go with, but the Airstream, the Airstream cushions seem firmer and more comfortable. Looking at the, uh, the, the, the slider door on the Interstate 19, at a push of a button, you can slide it, um, slide that door closed, which is quite nice. I also really like the screen in the Interstate where it's kind of like a sp split screen. So um, it does kind of cover the view a little bit, but it, it seems to be customized to the fit. Basically of the, the, the half over the sink can be raised and lowered independently nice. of the part that goes in and out for the, you know, the door area. And lastly, it has a, the Interstate 19 has a macerator and lots of people really like their macerators. The macerator pump used at the, the black tank. All right. Should we go and talk about the Gretsch Pros? Sure. I think first, I think we have to talk about their great customer service and the fact that it is a potentially a better a better value, better bang for your buck. It could be because they're a smaller brand, but their customer service is top notch. You hear stories online all the time about how they go above and beyond to make sure every coach is perfect. Uh, the the follow up after the purchase is fantastic, mm -hmm. and they just they seem really on top of it and that that's that's worth a lot in the rv industry we've noticed that the gretsch treatment ion is a very quiet van inside there's very few rattles shakes and rattles it's really quiet inside uh we we think that the bathroom the wet bath in the turismo is larger and it also has counter space it's one of the largest wet baths that we've seen and it has a window it does have a window, and I have to say it again, counter space. In terms of cabinets, the Grutch has a very large um, over the bed cabinet. That is 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 nice. Um, you can stick all kinds of things up there from, from extra luggage to even bedding, blankets, clothes, it's huge. And then the Grutch has a Firefly control system, which also has an app that you can use on your on your phone, which makes it easy so you don't have to get out of bed or lean up to, to do anything. You can control it. Or if you're in the front of the cab driving, for example, or, or yes. parked, you can, a better example. you can control the items in the, in the back cabin. Or the no, coach. In the, uh, <laughs> you can control uh, the items in the coach Why with do you your guys phone. watch us? Oh my. Okay. And also, when you're seated in the front of the cab, you can control the shades and lights through your phone if you want to in the back. The Gretsch comes stock with some fantastic upgraded wheels and tires. I don't have anything else to say. <laughs> I think that it's a great look. They're, they're off-road capable, they're all-terrain. Okay. That really enhance the look of the van. Um, in addition, the um, in the bathroom, because I was talking about the bathroom earlier, that it's a little bit larger um, than a lot of bathrooms out there, um, wet baths that it has a porcelain toilet, which is very nice. It's not nearly as shaky as um, the plasticky toilets. The Gretsch also comes with fixed, rigid solar panels, not the flexible kind. They're rigid, they're, they're, they're sturdy. I understand those have better performance mm. than the flexible solar panels. The Gretsch, I believe, um, has really good lighting internally in the, in the coach area. Okay, so those are the pros of um, the Interstate 19 that we feel and the pros for the Turismo. If you have any any additional pros or cons, please leave it in our comments. We'd love to hear from you. 
and I'm mean, obviously this isn't an, an exhaustive list, but these are our the the big ones that that made a difference to us. All right. Let's go through some of the cons. All right. So specifically for the Interstate 19, there have been many reported quality issues that people had on day one. We ourselves early on had to take it mm -hmm. to the service yeah. dealer for some warranty work. They fixed it, but yeah. it seems like a lot of people on the on the online groups report issues with some of the Airstream Interstate 19s. Yes. The another con is that the Interstate 19, their bathroom really doesn't have a counter space. Um, they just have, they have the sink. It's a wet bath. They have a sink, they have the toilet, and then obviously you have that handheld sprayer. Um, but there is no counter space. In addition, the um, the back cabinet um, is very very small. It basically can hold maybe a, a roll of, of of toilet paper. I think it was made for wine glasses or margarita glasses, which is cute, oh. but not oh. incredibly functional. Okay. The C-Zone control panel in the Interstate 19 works just fine, but there's no way to remotely control any of your devices from a cell phone, for example. And last but not least, the Interstate 19 microwave is, is a microwave. There, it, it's not a convection oven. Makes it a little hard if you want to bake a cake. <laughs> All right, let's look at the, the cons for Turismo. In my opinion, when the bed is made out, there is less room for your feet based on the um, the overhang of the, the the cabinets. I think the over the, the cabinets overhang um, a little bit, and so you have a little bit less room for your your feet when you're the, lying down. The cooktop actually extends over your feet on the passenger side, making it a little more claustrophobic, maybe. In addition, given that the um, the cabinet the the cooktop overhangs, um, we also you also don't have a guest seating area on that on that particular ottoman you can see comfortably two people in the back like we are now a third is pretty tight also in terms of cabinets the um the turismo doesn't have a designated pantry or a designated cabinet where you can hang clothes All right no wardrobe so it makes it tough to travel with the suit and last but not least the uh, turismo um, doesn't come with a standard floor mat for the coach area. Right, so it comes with a, a fantastic woven material floor, but if you get it dirty, you gotta clean it, which it'd be nicer if they had some kind of covering or a mm -hmm. rug that you could roll up and wash. All right, well, those are our pros and cons. Again, if you have others, and I'm sure you do, um, go ahead and leave us some, some comments. We'd love to find out what you guys think. And again, if you're liking this video, please go ahead and subscribe and give us a like. All right, now on to why did we make the switch? First, I think we should probably just give you guys the, the, the backstory. Um, we did start our adventure um, researching vans and vans, um, camper vans, um, back in 2021. Yeah. And we were um, doing a, a lot of research. We decided we wanted a 19 foot, a 19 foot camper van. We wanted something that was of the more luxurious side so that we could use it mostly for, again, visiting our kids at school versus rugged off-roading. So we want something that had a really nice kind of uh, interior that we would be really comfortable in. Right. Less camping, more glamping. More glamping. <laughs> yes. If you will. Um, so we um, we went back in, was it 2022 we bought it? Yes. So back in early 2022, we bought a Airstream Interstate 19 and we loved it. Right. And on the day we purchased it, Airstream actually announced they were coming out with what was called their E1 model. E1 was their larger battery, meaning that you had no longer to worry about a propane or a generator. Of course, ours didn't have that because we had purchased ours that day. And of course, once you plant that little seed in our head, we were very intrigued by this E1, this E1 package from Interstate 19. But regardless, we we, we took delivery. We, we loved did. our Airstream. Loved it. It was it was a great van. Still we, love it. We, we went camping with it a lot. Um, but we ended up selling it about two and a half months later because we put a deposit down on the Airstream. 2023 Airstream Interstate 19 with the E1 package. So we did. We sold We sold our Airstream and I was very sad by that. I really was. Um, and then we put the money down and we were waiting and waiting and waiting. And as we waited, we enjoyed going to RV dealers and looking at various models to see if we were missing anything, if anything new came out. And while we were researching, 
we um, we did come across something called a Gretsch. Right, we've not heard of Gretsch before. Nope. But when you went inside one, you saw it was immediately a luxurious camper van, very similar in style to the Airstream, and uh, manufactured right here in California. Mm -hmm. And I should note that one of the reasons why we never heard, we didn't hear of Gretsch is because Gretsch is a, a, a what is it, a party van, a limousine kind of um, company up until the pandemic. And when the pandemic hit, so they had a pivot. Camper vans. And, and they, I think their first product in 2021, thereabouts. And so that's why we never, we didn't hear about it because we started our research and we were visiting dealers and no no dealer had them and or none of the dealers that we saw had them and there wasn't videos out there on it and there just wasn't a lot of information. And so we didn't come across it until later on. Right. So we, we looked at the, the Gretsch, specifically their Turismo Ion version that was, again, 19 feet. They have a, a Terreno, which is, I think, 22 feet and a Strata, which is 24 feet, but we like the small 19 foot form factor. We really did. The Ion version had the battery packs that we wanted in terms of it had no propane, no generator. It could run everything you needed to mm -hmm. off the battery, which was great. Other features were very comparable with the Airstream. So one of the things to, to note when we, when we finally, when we discovered that there was a Gretsch uh, Turismo and we were able to see it, we realized that it's very, very similar to the Interstate 19. They're the same size, same general layout, which is what we really like. We really like the, the, the sofa that turns into a, a bed. We wanted a wet bath. Like Airstream, Gretsch takes all the high-end options from Mercedes. So you do get all of the driver assistance features, all the bells all the, and whistles, all the bells and whistles. which uh, just makes it a, a really nice, as near as we can tell, one of the nicest vans that you can buy from a feature standpoint. So. And a head-to-head -head comparison when we were looking at them, they both were, were were adding up to us that they were they were fairly equal. You know, there were some pros to Interstate and there's some pros to Gret. There's also some some negatives on either side. Um, but when we were weighing out the the differences, we decided that Gret came up on on top. So anyway, all being said, that is why we switched. We switched from the Interstate 19 to the Gretsch Turismo Island because we saw it, we loved it, we fell in love with it, and we we, we do. We it had still... every, it had everything, everything we wanted. So I think the next question that people want to know is if we had to do it all over again, if everything was equal and there was a Airstream 19 E1 package 4x4 here and a Gretsch Turismo Ion here. And assume they're the same cost, even? Yes, let's yeah, just okay. assume that they're the same cost. Which one would we get today? 110% of the Gretsch. The, my main reasons are the brand and the customer service. I, I feel very comfortable with the company, with the product. I mean, having them for close to a year, we're very happy with it. 
I would say the same thing. I would go with the with the Gretsch again. Um, and I would do it for pretty much the, the same reasons. I think that Gretsch is a smaller company. They take pride in their, their vans. They take pride in, um, in what they build and they stand behind their products. They really do. The issues that do pop up and they're fixed so quickly. And while Airstream is also a fantastic company, we saw just a higher incidence of issues and it took longer to get fixed and the, the rattles never went away. And mm -hmm. we just, we love the Gretsch. It's, it's and, a fantastic vehicle. And I do have to say, we are fortunate in the fact that we live in California. So getting it to Gretsch, their headquarters is in Southern California. So getting it there isn't that big of a deal no. for us. So that is our video. So I hope you have enjoyed it. And again, if you liked it, please subscribe. And I would love to hear what your thoughts are on the Gretsch versus the Airstream in the 19 foot camper van market, because I think those are the two high end competitors that most people are looking at. And if you had one or the other and you switched to a different product or a different van, please let us know that too. And why? All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much for watching.